Hey guys, welcome back to Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. I'm Shannon, and today on the show, we're taking a look at the evil lord of destruction, Skeletor. Now this is from Super 7's new Masters of the Universe uh, line. Based on the vintage figures, um, but more cartoon accurate. As you can see, the packaging is very similar to the vintage line as well new uh we have adult collector added there master universe skeletor evil lord of destruction as seen on tv and instead of mattel we have super seven on the back you can see a nice little scene skeletor with his havoc staff in hand prepares to conquer the planet of eternia Super7.com, Masters of the Universe, 5.5 inch action figures, 13.97 centimeters, collect them all, each sold separately. We have He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe, She-Ra, the most powerful woman in the universe, uh, from the Evil Warriors, we have Skeletor, the Evil Lord of Destruction, from the Evil Horde, we have Hordak, Ruthless Leader of the Evil Horde. And the powers of Grayskull, we have Hero, the most powerful wizard in the universe, and Eldor, heroic guardian of the Book of Living Spells. And as you can see, Skeletor does have an action feature, twist his waist, and he swings back with a punch. Now let's go ahead and open this guy up and take a look inside. First things first, instead of a mini comic, comes with a little uh, display card back here. See Skeletor in front of Snake Mountain. He-Man and the Masters of the Universe brought action and adventure into living rooms around the world, and the fun continued with exciting Masters of the Universe action figures. In order to deliver the cartoon series on time, the toy designs were simplified for animation, so that the figures did not always match the characters children saw on TV until now. Skeletor's first animated appearance was an early television commercial for Castle Grayskull. The commercial's toy accurate costume and glowing red eyes were simplified and stylized for animation, and his sword was eliminated, making the Havoc Staff his primary weapon. As you can see, there's the original design for Skeletor in figure action figure uh, style. Uh, early design for Skeletor, animated appearance for the commercial, and then the filmation version right there. Very cool. Uh, also, we have Skeletor. His lower half is in a small bag, so we'll go ahead and take that off. Set him back here. I wish I had the original figures so I could compare them. Sadly, I do not. I've lost them over time. I had at one time virtually the entire collection. It tears me up that I've got to rebuild that collection now. But we also have his weapons here. We have his Havoc Staff and two Power Swords in a nice little baggie. Let's go ahead and take a look at those first. We'll open up the baggie. Hopefully. Maybe. There we go. All right, so first we have a completed version of the Power Sword in purple for Skeletor's colors. Very cool. We also have a ha purple half of the Power Sword. And if you remember from my He-Man video last time, He-Man came with a gray half of the Power Sword right here. Now let's go ahead and put them together. And I do believe this may have the same issue. Well, not as bad. It does kind of have the same issue as the original line where it doesn't hold together completely at the tips, but at least it doesn't bend out all the way. It's pretty cool. 
very nice. And this is to represent, in the original comics, in the original mini-comics, Skeletor and He-Man both had half the power sword. And when they put them, if they uh, got the other half, they could put them together and get the powers of power Castle Grayskull. Well, they simplified that for animation and just had He-Man possessing the power sword and obtaining all the power of Castle Grayskull. So, very cool. And now we've got the Havoc Staff. Just a pink staff there with a ram's head, a ram's skull on top of it. This is where uh, Skeletor can channel his power through. Very cool. Let's go and zoom in on Skeletor. Angle this down a little bit. There we go. All right. And we'll take a look at Skeletor. First thing you'll notice is Skeletor has a full hood uh, like in the animation, whereas in the original, it it just, just kind of looked like a bag over his head, really. Uh, it didn't really look that great. But there you see how he used to look compared to now. Uh, and they did away with the green around the outside of his face. Uh, they made this uh, the face more prominent, looks like. Um, instead of just painting on the mouth. Uh, they really... Really great sculpt, it looks like. Really nice. Gave the hood some depth. Gave the skull some depth. I'm liking it. Uh, they did not add as much detail onto his harness there. Uh, and on the original action figure, they had uh, used uh, the same arms on everyone. So a lot of times you would have bracelets that weren't colored in. They would be skin toned. Uh, also in the original line, uh, Skeletor's feet were monster feet. Whereas now, they are just like they appeared in the cartoon. Just regular feet. Uh, also, the power har the harness, it does look like, uh, as, along with the belt, can come off just like in the original line. Very cool. Now let's go over articulation. Now with He-Man, I had trouble with his right leg. It is very stiff. Uh, with Skeletor, it looks like... Both legs are pretty stiff at that joint right there. So I'm not even going to attempt to uh, break it free because I might end up breaking the legs. Otherwise, they would go out a little bit. And this appears to be with problem with both legs. So since this isn't just with one action figure, uh, I would be very careful when you get these figures. Uh, um... Chances all are they're all stiff like this. And mine has a little bit of a uh, paint blemish on the uh, toe of his foot. I'm not really liking that. Same with the bottom there. But you know what? It is what it is. Now, he does... I think... He's supposed to twist at the waist, but mine is not. It's very stiff. Uh, I do not want to break it free because I'm afraid I might break the figure. So we'll leave that be as well. Uh, I can get by with not, with no action feature on him. Uh, his arms are also very stiff, but they will move. They will go all the way around. This one's a lot stiffer than the other. And his head can turn about that far. Uh, you might be able to turn it all the way around. Um, his hood does kind of get in the way, so it might be best not to try to turn it, uh, or else you might pop his head off. Uh, these figures, they are very solid. Um, a lot heavier than the original line. Uh, I'm really liking them. Uh, now let's go ahead and put his Havoc Staff in his hand and see how that turns out. Oh. 
it's not looking like it wants to go in. There we go. He can hold his Havoc Staff fairly well. It's pretty tight though. Uh, you really got to push it. You got to work it. Uh, now let's see how he holds his sword. Now we can either put it in his open hand like that, which holds it pretty well, or we can put it in his gripping hand, which holds it just as well. Very nice. Uh, also, you can still kind of, maybe, put the power sword in the back of his harness like that. But for now, for display, let's go ahead and put his Havoc Staff in his closed hand and we'll put his power sword in his open hand. And we'll display him just like that. Let's go ahead and stand him next to the most powerful man in the universe, He-Man. Very cool. Love seeing these two guys together. Uh, very nice. I'm, I've been waiting to get these guys for quite a while. I can't wait to get the uh, Hero and Eldor, as well as Series 2 of the line. Um, I may even start getting the uh, Primal Age DC Heroes, as well as the uh, Primal Age... Uh, horror figures as well. Maybe uh, maybe display them together. See how well they uh, fit together. Uh, hopefully they'll stand about the same size. Uh, let's check that uh, size. Anyway, since I forgot to do it last time, let's go ahead and check the height. And about five and a quarter. About five and a quarter. Very nice. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Next time on Come Again TV's toy review, I'm going to be taking a look at She-Ra, the most powerful woman in the universe. Have a good one, geeks. Take care. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you hit the subscribe button right there so you can stay up to date on all things geek culture. Also, Make sure you check out one of these two playlists on the side for more videos just like the one you just watched. I'm Shannon for Comic Getting TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Take care, geeks.